Welcome back everybody, it's time for more of the Super Mega Baseball 2 series. We are playing Two Cans vs. B-Wolves today. I'm looking forward to this one. We have Anton Greenberry vs. Andy McKenzie. This is gonna be great, let's play. My current team against my former team, and they're not having a very good year. They're only 3-5 and five on the season. We see Flash Jackson's hitting only 172 to start this year, which is a bit surprising. Overall, this team is not putting up the numbers that I thought they would or that I saw in many of the sims I did. So, obviously their star players aren't doing enough. But that's going to happen in baseball, especially in these shorter seasons. Which, by the way, I know I talked about in last episode how many games we should have in a season moving forward. And I, I was corrected in the comments that 12 would actually be optimal over 14. Because if we had 12 game seasons, we'd have everyone in our rotation pitch three times and our aces would start the postseason, which is what I wanted to happen. So going forward, 12 games is going to be perfect. And that is one of my favorite season lengths anyway. As we strike out Lance Adams, now it's Andrew Ross, who is hitting only 290 with a single home run this year. Not the biggest impact as he flies deep into center, maybe in another ballpark that has a chance, but not here in Shaka Sports turf. Let's go bottom one. Kelly John Charles starts us off again with Perry Cummings batting down in the eighth spot. There's a strike on the inside corner from Andy McKenzie, and then I can't catch up to it. Power swings are going to be difficult today. Might need to go contact. Ooh, on the ground, rolling slowly, and John Charles will reach. It's a base hit. Jordan Starks next, maybe the MVP of season one so far here in the Kane League. Oh my, that, for some reason, it was right down the middle, and I could not handle it. That's going foul. Maybe we can take off here with John Charles. As we strike out, and John Charles is safe. That was close. Now, I did move Marcus Calhoun up in the order a spot. I thought that he would be better as the three over the four spot, where now Riley's going to hit. Up the middle, it's a base hit for Marcus Calhoun. Here comes Kelly John Charles, headed home, and he beats the throw. One nothing, two cans. Good start. Now, Michael Riley. Still just one away, and this is going to the alley. That might score another, but Flash gets to it very quickly, and we will stand with a second and third situation for Dante Rooks. Please, no more pop-ups. I can't take any more of those. Come on, Dante. Rooks with a dribbler back to McKenzie, and we won't test anything there. Next up, Desmond Payne, who has maybe one hit all series. He's starting today in the place of Ja'Cory Day, who's not good right now in terms of mojo. So Desmond Payne. 3-0 count here from Andy McKenzie. We'll take a strike. And walk. So they're loaded. Forces everywhere, and now it's David McClelland who could really blow this game open. And McClelland pops foul. Come on, David. Ooh, down the line, but foul. Two strikes now. And we bloop it left center and over the head of the shortstop. That's a base hit to score one. And now Perry Cummings has the bases loaded. And another opportunity. Take a strike on the outside. Ooh, fouled away, bit late, two strikes. Come on, Perry. It's flied high into right field. And that was a pretty powerful contact swing from Perry Cummings. Overall, great first inning. No hits for the B-Wolves, we get four. Make Andy McKenzie use about 25 pitches. Nice start. Leon Daniels now. Took me yard in the tournament. That was fun. Now Leon strikes out. 
After this season, I probably will raise the mojo. I played on 90 at the end of Super Mega Baseball 1. And I feel like the Ego, like, ranges have stayed the same. I feel like 80 is as easy as it was then or as difficult in the same ways. So I think I'll go up to 85 next time. I just knew I'd have to transition back into the game and it would take a little time. And I'm still trying to iron out some issues. I'm only 5-3 and three this season, so I've had some bad games. Anton Greenberry will ground to the right side and he's out. Now batting, number 46. Kelly John Charles is next, hitting 314 on the season. Maybe it goes up from here. No, he's out. Could be a much faster inning for Andy McKenzie. Ball high to Jordan Starks. Come on, Andy, you gotta give us something good. Oh, there it was. Is that his changeup? Because I it has this wicked movement. That or is just like awkward movement I can't handle. Wow, good inning here for Andy McKenzie. Three soft grounders. That'll buy them time if their offense can get going. Here's Corey Boyd into the outfield. And that shouldn't be an issue for David McClellan, who is locked in. What has he done to get locked in? He had the RBI single. Maybe that was the main catalyst. This is driven. Payne has to run a long way, and he can't make the catch. That was close. It was worth a try. Don't regret it. But it's a double now for the B-Wolves as they try to get a run home. And Andy McKenzie has always been a good hitting pitcher, so... We'll see if that holds true in the second edition of Super Mega Baseball. Quickly two strikes though on Andy. McKenzie one and two, foul again. Try the inside corner, strike three. Andy can't believe it. How about Flash Jackson? Glide into right lazily for John Charles, caught. 3-4-5 now up for the Toucans, up 2-0. Let's go, Marcus. Ooh, a bit early on that swing. And then underneath the high fastball. A quick strikeout from Andy McKenzie. And then Riley. Maybe I should take a pitch once again. Well, not that one. 0-2. Oh, no. What happened to what I did in the first inning? That was pretty good. Now Dante Rooks. There we go. Come on, Rooks. Dante Rooks lines out. Good swing. Lance Adams back up. His average is somehow low. Uh-oh. That's going to help matters. A solo shot over that sculpture... Thing, the waves I'm not sure what to call it that was a 477 foot blast so it's not like Lance is having a bad season it's just he hasn't been as elite but that could go and change things Andrew Ross now we know he can go yard he has no problem with that trying to hit that outside corner We'll go up and inside. There's another drive foul. Nothing fair. I'm pitching him very carefully. There's a strikeout as he throws the bat. He should be thrown out of the game. Make him sit out the rest of this one. Here is Andrew, uh, not Andrew Ross, uh, Leon Daniels grounding out. And Maurice Manning sitting 107. That does not sound right. We know Maurice Manning is the player who played, outplayed his ratings more than anybody else in that first series. All right, Desmond Payne to lead off the fourth for us. And that won't quite sneak through, but Rose will not make the play in time. Infield hit. Now David McClellan. There's a left field blast, and it's caught. Nice swing there from David. 
How about Perry Cummings? We got to see him turn around his offense. Come on, Perry. That might get down, and it will base hit. I'll take it. Two aboard now for the two cans. We have Anton Greenberry. Do we just try to bunt them over here? I think we should. But just because I try doesn't mean it's going to work. See? Good pitching there by Andy McKenzie. And then a ground ball that'll do the job. Maybe even more. Greenberry re- What? I wanted to use my challenge. No challenges yet in Super Mega Baseball. I could use one there. Kelly John Charles, two in scoring position. Can he come through? Couple misses here from McKenzie. And a high drive into left field. Unfortunately, no more runs. It could have been a lot worse of an outing for Andy McKenzie. He's lucky it's only two to one as this sneaks under the glove over at third base. Corey Boyd. Give us a nice ground ball hit right at somebody. Tough curveball, the handle there from Greenberry, followed by a missing fastball. And a changeup, it's strike three. All right, Darren Rose. Let's see if he can ground out for us. Or pop up for Rooks. Two away. Andy McKenzie now trying to make something of this leadoff hit. I don't think we're going to let him, though. He is waving and missing badly. Strike three, another strikeout for Anton Greenberry. Jordan Starks leads off the fifth. And I wanted to take Andy Yard right there. 53 pitches for Greenberry or McKenzie. That might get down and it won't. Nice catch by Boyd. Now Marcus Calhoun hitting 394 on the season. Can't catch up to it with Marcus for some reason. There's a line drive or a ground ball up the middle. 98 power on that one. It's a base hit. Michael Riley with two home runs and four ribbies on the season. That is a rocket pass first base. Ross has trouble with it. And I thought about it. But I don't think that would have ended well. Dante Rooks is next. I feel like it's been a while since he really got to drive one. His last at bat was a line out. And now it's going to be a ground ball, four, six, three, double play. So Andy is getting himself into trouble, but he's been a master at getting out of it. Here is the sixth inning now getting underway with a quick ground ball. Anton Greenberry at. 45 pitches so far. And Lance Adams, who took him yard once, lines out to Cummings. But now Andrew Ross. And there is a single up the middle from Andrew Ross. Leon Daniels trying to get some damage done against me. And a pop-up in foul territory. Good inning once again for Anton Greenberry. We go bottom six with Desmond Payne. Ooh, why did I swing at that? Why would I ever think that's a good idea? And a pop-up now from Payne. One away. McClellan's turn, one for two on the season, or the day. And he pops up, almost into the same spot. Caught by Darren Rose. Perry Cummings, still tense, even after a single earlier. Ah, bad, bad swing. 0-2. There we go. That was a really weird line drive, though. My power on that was 89. So that had some, like, knuckleball-like movement or something. It just... It was 89 power, but that contact didn't look like 89 power. Two strikes quickly to Manning, who pops up. We're starting to see some bad outs. Not really challenging the defense. Jonathan Starks. He'll line it through the middle for a hit. 
So we're not getting a ton of one, two, three innings, it feels like, but they're having trouble getting runners past first base. Corey Boyd. As Greenberry looks to go deep into this ball game. We'll try that cutter away, and it's a ground ball. Probably not going to be two. And now a runner in scoring position. So if Darren Rose comes through, we could have ourselves a tie game. Two away for the B-Wolves, strike one. We chase this. Not that time. How about this one? Ooh, two strikes. Now we're going in the dirt with the curve. And it's grounded. There is the final out of the inning. Greenberry through seven, only allowing the solo home run. But Andy McKenzie is still in the game. I think I'll keep Greenberry in for one more inning. Plus, the mojo boost is helping out his hitting anyway, so let's give it a shot. Two and one. Ooh, why would I swing at that like I did? Three and two now. And it's in the left center. Get down. Get down for a base hit. Anton Greenberry is aboard. There we go. Now let's get him home somehow. Kelly John Charles leads off, or he's next. Oh no, a sharp grounder at short. They'll get two. Double play. Jordan Starks next. And I think I was a little early on that one. I didn't think it was that early though. Grounded again at short. Rose makes the throw in time. We're through seven. A pretty quick game so far. 12 hits combined. Now Dominic Carter comes off the bench and Greenberry makes the stop. Very close game. Flash Jackson now with a towering fly in the left center. And Desmond Payne, whoa, I had no clue what I was doing there. That might be three bases, and the throw is not in time. When there's a lot of hang time, problems can happen. And now we have to get through Ross and Adams to hopefully keep this game 2-1. to one. And good luck with that. Now I get a chance at redemption, and that one is caught. Of course, though, my blunder causes this game to become tied. And now to face Andrew Ross, who could really ruin things. Ross with a drive to left center. And this ball is off the wall for extra bases. And he'll hold up at two. Leon Daniels is 0 for 3. He wants to give the B-Wolves an eighth inning lead. Will we let him? Leon into right, it's a hit. However, Ross holds at three. I think we take McKenzie out of the game, or Greenberry. I'm getting so mixed up. Gallagher enters to face Maurice Manning. Come on, keep it tied. Strike one. Gallagher misses high. The screwball away. Another miss. Good eye here for Manning. And then strike two. I think we go power pitch now. A change up, low strike three. And we are through seven and a half. Cameron Moss is going to pitch now with us hoping to untie this game. We're bottom eight with Marcus Calhoun. Whoa, way inside. Now way outside, what's the strategy here? Strike one. Ooh, big swing and miss from Marcus Calhoun. Two and two. And a pop-up in the infield. All right, we'll see who can get the edge now because runs have been really tough to come by. Now Riley pops it up into the outfield. Rose will make this catch. Dante Rooks is tense. And a hard ground ball probably won't help things. We're going to the ninth tide. Okay. It is crunch time now. The next run might win it. Oh, it's over. Cummings and into right. Base hit. 
Jonathan Starks and his speed is aboard, so got to watch out for a steal now. And a ground ball through the infield makes it two on, nobody out. We definitely need something to go our way now. Darren Rose. It's a grounder. Come on. Touch. Throw. No, I tried to get the triple play. We could have probably gotten two if I had just thrown it the first. Now one down. Cameron Moss, the pitcher, will hit, and he grounds it. Now, oh, missed the tag. We get the pitcher out at first. Now Flash Jackson. Please don't get a hit. Inside out swing. Three outs, although it wasn't clean. So now we could walk off with a run. Desmond Payne versus Cameron Moss. He flies into right center. That won't do it. David McClellan. He does have some power. Our best bet here is getting him to go to the gap. And that's going deep to left. McClellan, come on. Caught. Look good off the bat. Now Perry Cummings to his tents. Can we get him aboard? Too high. Three and out to Perry Cummings. We got a take here. And he walks. So now anything in the gap should score him. And we're definitely not leaving this up to Gallagher. We're going to go with Franklin Fitzgerald because his power could give us that gapper we need to win. Oh no, that was really late. Cummings takes off. He's on to second base and safe. A hit might do it now, Frank. Ooh, I almost swung at that. Into the outfield, shallow, and caught. We're going to extra innings now. Who do I want to pitch? Let's go Sammy Hawthorne versus Lance Adams. Uh-oh. Adams through the middle. You know what? That's going to be it for Hawthorne in this outing. I think I need to go to our closer even if it's not the right situation. Because he's our best pitcher. And we don't have too many games. We have two left to go in the regular season. And now Ross with a towering fly. This has a chance. And it's a two-run shot. In two pitches, they have changed the whole complexion of this game. Wow. Andrew Ross hits a home run. Lance got one earlier. Four to two B-Wolves as they attempt to save their season. It might be too late for them because they are three and five. But they're giving themselves a good opportunity now. And they're ruining the mojo for Marquise Walker in the process. This is not good. One away now after a pop-up. It's Jonathan Starks. And grounded back to Walker. We get the double play. So unless we pull off a miracle, we're going to lose our fourth game. Here's Kelly John Charles to lead the way. John Charles up the middle. Couldn't sit back on that one. All right, a home run ties it. Let's see it. We got short and Starks up. I mean, it could happen right here. Number 15, the short into right field and this ball is caught I've reached for so many away with Jordan Starks here's Marcus Calhoun he could definitely go yard oh I wanted the wait there but I couldn't do it come on Marcus there we go it's a liner and almost a double play to end it Michael Riley one more chance Come on, Riley. This ball is headed deep to left center field. Michael Riley has tied the game. Another two-run homer. We're not done here. What a dramatic game this has been. 443 feet. We could be going to another inning, perhaps. Or we could win it right now. 
Dante Rooks, who's tense. Four apiece. Two and one to Rooks. Oh, I missed it. Just flat out missed. And now Rooks pops it up high into the air. We're going to an 11th inning. This is fun. Four to four. Now a ground ball hit to Cummings. Each team gets a two run homer in the 10th. But now a base hit up the middle. Another base runner here for the B Wolves. They've gotten many. And they'll bring in Maurice Hudson, who definitely can supply power. Hudson, foul. There, we got him fooled. And a slider poked into center, caught by McClellan. Are you having a fun time with this episode? If you are, let me know down below in the comment section. Also, leave a like on the video. Now it's a slow roller charging. Marcus Calhoun makes the play. We're going bottom 11 against Eric Hancock. Can we win the game? It's our six, seven, eight hitters though. So it's not the best of our lineup. As Desmond Payne gets an inside out grounder and Payne reaches. So there's your potential winning run if we can get him home. David McClellan. Hancock's already rattled too. Oh no, I might be as well. 0-2. Oh Payne goes. The throw to second is not in time. Come on, David. Too high. Let's go contact swing. And it's on the ground to the right side, advancing the runner Payne. All we need now, Perry, is for you to get a sacrifice fly. Infield in, outfield shallow. Come on, Perry. It's a 2-0 count. And it's a fly ball in the left center field. We're testing it. Here's the throw to the dish. And it's safe. Payne is home and we win the game. What a way to win this one. We were down 4-2. Get a 2-0, two-run blast. And the very next inning, we win it with a walk-off sack fly. There you go. That's game of the series so far. It'll be tough to top. I hope you had as much fun with that game as I did. Wow. That win clinched us a playoff spot, I believe. Maybe it's not automatic quite yet, but it sure helps. If we had lost, we'd be in a three-way tie right there. So, what a win. Chompers get a victory here. They have clinched a spot in the postseason. The Phantoms lose to the Raptors. There we go. We're not the only ones. Or actually, no, we didn't lose to them. We just almost did. The Phantoms are 6-3. The Warhawks are 5-4. If the Warhawks win their final game, they're going to the playoffs, and it's against us. So I think that we're fine. If you look at the standings, we have six victories, and the Razors are done. So we are going to the postseason, everybody, guaranteed. But who will be joining us in our division? It could be the Warhawks. And we will find out next episode. Thank you all for watching and supporting this series. It's been so much fun already. And today has been a major highlight. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Leave your feedback below. Did you think we could actually pull that game off? I will see you all next time. Have a great rest of your day.